So by request, um, I'm going to do a video on formal charge. It's something that uh, has to do with Lewis dot structure and resonance and the stability of molecules given some um, different electrostatic forces that interact. Um, officially, a formal charge is the charge of every atom inside of a molecule. You can get an overall charge if these formal charges don't end up balancing out in the end. But um, the formal charge, is, as close as you can get to zero, the more stable the molecule will be. So the more zero formal charges that each atom has inside of a molecule, the more stable that molecule will be. Um, so I made this Lewis dot structure for chlorate, right? ClO3 minus. Um, I did the process. I got my 26 uh, electrons. I'm, that's out of 32. That means that there are eight extra bonds that are needed. That's four bonds there um, with 18, 18 valence electrons. And then here I drew it out um, based on the formula that Mrs. Ehrenstein gave you for drawing out Lewis dot structures. And it looks lovely. Right here's chlorine in the center. It's got an oxygen. Um, it's got three oxygens and one double bond. But this isn't actually the shape that the molecule takes most often. And that's based on the formal charge of each atom inside that chlorate molecule. Um, so to calculate the formal charge, and really what formal charge means is you've got this molecule that's bonded. Let's say I took this oxygen and this single bonded oxygen. Um, what we have is we've got nine-ish electrons, we've got two in the center ring, then we've got six in the lone pairs, and then we really have a shared set of electron here, but because it is between the oxygen sometimes and the chlorine sometimes, right, because it's shared between those two, we're only going to count it as one electron in terms of the electrostatic forces that are acting on that molecule. So we've got negative nine and positive eight. This atom inside of the larger molecule will have a charge of its own, right? Um, and we can calculate that. We can calculate the formal charge of each um, atom inside of a molecule. We take the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom. So for oxygen, that would be six. For chlorine, that's seven. For carbon, it's only um, four valence electrons. So we take the number of valence electrons in the neutral molecule. We then take the number of lone electrons, not lone pair, but each individual lone electron. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the number of lone electrons, and then half the number of shared electrons. Half the number of shared electrons because they're shared, right? Half the time they'll be over by oxygen, half the time they'll be over by chlorine. So we can't really dictate whether or not they're going to be in one place or the other. So we have to, multi we have to divide this by one half. We look at each individual atom inside and how it's bonded. So here we've got uh, an oxygen that is double bonded to a chlorine. Oxygen with a double bond, um, if we follow this formula, has six valence electrons in, in, in its neutral state. We subtract the four lone electrons that we have, these four unbound electrons. Then we take the four electrons that are in this shared bond right here. We divide that by two and we end up with a formal charge of zero. However, this bond formation, right, this bond for this chlorate compound, um, we've got six lone electrons and two shared electrons, so that's six minus six lone, two shared divided by two, gives us a negative one. So the formal charge for this would be negative one, and the formal charge for this would be zero. And now we know, right, because it doesn't really matter what this double bonded oxygen is bonded to, we know that anytime we see a double bonded oxygen, the two sets of lone pair electrons, um, we know that that formal charge is zero. And now we know that the formal charge of this is going to be negative one. So really what we're looking at is the formal charge of this center atom, chlorine. So if we construct it like this, we're going to have a zero here, we're going to have a negative one over here, um, and we're actually going to have a negative one over here, giving us a total charge of negative two. But if we look at the chlorine, that's seven in its neutral state, minus two uh, unshared electrons here, minus eight shared electrons over two, gives us a formal charge of plus one. Now, if this, so this means that this has more protonic charge than it has electronic charge from the um, uh, electrons. 
That means it's got a greater positive charge here than it does the negative charge here. This negative and positive would actually end up balancing out. This positive charge would pull down one of these electrons. Right? That's why we're, when, we say, when we talk about stability, we're talking about the bonds that are the most stable because um, the forces are the most balanced. So if we were to change it from this shape to this shape, and these are called resonant structures, right? this compound bounces back and forth between these. Um, what we're really looking for is which one it occurs in more often. If this were a double bond and a double bond, this would be zero. This would be zero. This would still be negative one. But the chlorine now, with two sets of double bonds, a single bond, and two lone electrons, that's seven minus the two electrons, minus the 10 shared electrons divided by two, gives it a formal charge of zero. So here we've got a formal charge of zero and negative one. This ends up being zero, as opposed to negative one, negative one, zero, and positive one. This compound ends up being the more stable of these two resonance structures. And that doesn't mean that this doesn't exist. This exists sometimes, right? The oxygen is electronegative enough to pull that electron over and kind of hoard it for a little while, and then it'll bounce back into this shape. And this double bond will bounce around, and these double bonds will bounce around. But really, if we calculate out the formal charge for each of these, then we can figure out the most stable, the most common occurring resonance structure of this particular compound. When do we have to worry about formal charge? Well, we have to worry about formal charge in two cases. The first case, we're talking about polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ions act strangely uh, inherently, right? They've got this charge in and of themselves, so they're going to act strangely. So it's good when you run into a polyatomic ion to try out your formal charge. The second case is if we have something that can form more than four bonds. Um, and anything smaller than silicon will never form more than four bonds. So if you're talking about carbon or oxygen, um, in this case, chlorine shouldn't really technically form more than four bonds, but again, we're talking about a polyatomic ion. Um, so anything of silicon and above, try formal charge. Any of the polyatomic ions, use formal charge. I hope this clears some things up.